one of the things our team was really surprised about uh, when we got here was um, the beauty uh, that, that, that is so apparent in Haiti. Uh, from the beautiful mountains to the beautiful ocean, and of course the beautiful people who have a resilience in the midst of uh, great trial. Uh, we've been touring around uh, various places in Port-au-Prince, Haiti that were uh, destroyed by the earthquake back in January of this year. We all remember the earthquake, we all remember uh, the images that we saw on our TV screens, uh, but something happens when you actually come down here and see uh, and hear the stories, see the people, hear their stories, um, and really experience uh, what, what's been going on down here. For me, it's kind of been a, a trip of just kind of just trying to absorb, take it all in. I don't, I'm not sure I've processed. I, I, I actually, I'm sure I have not processed at all. I mean, I just drove the streets. I don't know how to begin to think about what people who went through those few seconds and their whole world looks different. People they know, they, their friends, their family are gone. Um, they walk the streets that they grew up on. and completely devastated and different and tent, tent villages now um, can't even begin to think how to how they begin to process and go through that as we drove around and looked at some of the damage from the earthquake uh, it was pretty overwhelming um, the Jeep the vehicle that we we're driving riding around with got really quiet when we um, drove through there but when you look at the people they were adapting they were figuring out how, how to get it done and, and, and the survival skills kicked in but uh, these are people, they're not a lazy people, they work hard. As you drive around the streets, you see, you see them working hard, you see them um, doing what they need to do to, to take care of their families. Probably the most eye-opening for us was this church that we visited um, uh, on, a, on a street called Carfoufe. And uh, this is a church that uh, has 3,000 people in membership. This is a church that on every morning at 4.30 in the morning, uh, a th over a thousand people would gather together and, and, and pray. Now it's a church where they're trying to rebuild, they're trying to get a roof back on, uh, and they're trying to have a space where people can worship again uh, together uh, in community there. Probably the greatest need is just the basic needs, the basic needs of food, water, shelter. Um, one of the experiences that stands out to me is we went to the Saline and just seeing the children there and they just flock around you but the missionary we're with pointed out the orange hair that that's a sign of malnourishment um, the distended bellies the, a sign of malnourishment so the basic needs are, are lacking even though it's devastating they're hopeful they're uh, encouraging um, they're surviving, they're, and they're survivors. Uh, we worship a big God, and the same God that we were worship, worshiping down here in Haiti, uh, my wife was worshiping at the same time back in Marion, Indiana. So their God is our God, and um, to watch them worship and to watch them celebrate His love uh, through this um, through this time and events uh, was pretty inspiring for me. They sang a song in church this morning, and it's my favorite memory so far. When the missionaries interpreted it for us, what it meant was, because Jesus is on the throne, everything is already okay. And that's amazing. We walked the streets and we saw the buildings and we, I mean, we, we felt the hurt of the people and, and then they stood there and sung a song that said, you know what, this is bad, but Jesus is on the throne and everything's already okay. That's what I'm taking back. <laughs>